in the Bible, the phrase, do not be afraid, appears not just 365 times, but to include a leap year, like the one that we just had last year during the pandemic, 2020 was a leap year, and God makes sure that every time and every season in our life is included. And so the phrase which is repeated to Abraham, the father of our faith, to Moses, to all the prophets, to Mary, to Joseph, to the apostles, to St. Paul, the phrase, do not be afraid, is present in the Bible 366 times. Do you think God has a message for us? Do not be afraid. Because if God is with us, who can be against us? Chapter 8 of the book of Romans. Is God with you is the question. Because if God is with me, I will be okay. Everything is going to be just fine. The question that Jesus asks of the disciples in the boat today, and the boat is our life, is a question that he wants to ask you. Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? And faith has nothing to do with belief. Because all of you are great believers. And what do you want? You know, because you believe in God. A cookie? Because you believe in God? Even the devil believes in God. The devil is a great believer. The devil knows the creed better than you do, which we will recite here in just a little bit. But the devil doesn't trust because faith has to do with trust. Hence, when Jesus appeared to St. Faustina Kowalska in Poland, great things happen in Poland. And Jesus spoke to Faustina in Polish and said, draw a picture for everybody of me. And that's the divine mercy picture. He said, right underneath that picture, Jesus, I believe in you. Is that what that picture says? No, it says, Jesus, I trust in you because our walk of faith has to do with trust, that I trust in God, not in me, but in the God who is in me. That's why the second reading today says, all those who have come to the conviction, so once you have had a conviction that God is in your life and that He died for you and for all. Therefore, you die. So see, the, 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 the trick in this life is to die here so as then to live. I have to die to this life, die to myself so that I can then live. In other words, read that second reading again for today, which says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And alone, I can't do 
anything. I alone, I can't do nothing. I can do nothing alone. But I can do everything through him who strengthens me. Hmm? That's Again, I'm in the Bible here. Alone, I can't do it. But I'm not doing it alone. Because Jesus is in me. In other words, I am Jesus. You want... This, this is Christianity here that I'm trying to explain to you. The basic Christianity is that I am the body of Christ. If I want to see Jesus, I have to... You know, if I want to see Jesus, I look around. I am the body of Christ. Jesus is in me. I receive Jesus in his body to become his body. Huh? Paul says this in another way. He says, you are a temple of the Holy Spirit. You, you, you think this is a temple. No, 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 no. Look at, this is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Huh? So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. New things have come. What new things? That God is with me. So the only thing I can be afraid of is myself. I have nothing to fear. So why are you afraid? That's the question Jesus is asking. They're on the boat. And they are fishermen. So why would they be afraid of a storm? If they're fishermen, you know, the... the, 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 the the twelve were fishermen. You all know that. You know, you don't have to be a great Bible reader to know that the twelve were fishermen, right? So they knew fishing. But in the Gospel of Matthew, we are told that this squall that Mark describes is an earth-shaking event. It's like an earthquake. In other words... The Greek word there is a tsunami. That's why they are terrified because a tsunami has come. You ever been in a tsunami? Okay, I, I was in Crescent City. We had these violent storms and in 2011 there was a tsunami. It's a horrible thing. Huh? You know, the... the when you're in a in an earthquake, you feel like your your ground is shaky, and you're gonna fall. So you're in the boat, and you have a tsunami happen to you, and you feel like you're gonna sink, like you're gonna drown. Now you get it that why are they they're they're so terrified. You have to picture this. Because they're fishermen. They, 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 if this was just any storm, it wouldn't have done anything to them. This is a horrible thing. It's like, let me put it to you this way. It's like a stage four cancer diagnosis. You get it? Okay. Or as in the case of that uh, baby that you all met here uh, Three weeks ago, remember Camila? Okay. When Sally, you remember you were talking to them? Okay. At the end, uh, their little baby, you remember her? She was born, and after a couple of months in San Francisco at the children's hospital, the parents are told that the baby is blind. Huh? So what, you know, what do we do? What do we do? And they come, right? 
They say to me, Father, what do we do? Our life is over. We're sinking, right? You know, this is an earth shattering event. So what do we do as people of faith when something like that happens? We pray. We trust. Because the Bible says there is nothing impossible for God. With faith, everything is possible. I told them, I said, pray. Everything is going to be okay. Pray. Place your daughter's name underneath St. Joseph. Give her blessed and exercised holy water. Put the blessed oil on her. Let's anoint her. Let's pray for her. Uh -huh. And they took her to UC Davis. They put her for another test. This time they put her in that tube they put, put you in. And Camila came out of the test and the doctors say, well, she's not blind. She has cataracts. And the first doctors at the Children's Hospital in San Francisco said she was blind. One of the best hospitals in the country. But there is a better doctor, huh? That we believe in and trust in and have faith in. Do you not yet have faith, Jesus asks? If you had the faith as small as a mustard seed, you could say to that mountain, move! And it would move, huh? And so she had her operation and she's fine. She can see. Huh? There are earth shattering events in our life all the time. What do we do? The same thing they did. What did they do? The, the, the disciples in the boat. What's the, what's the boat? That's your life inside of you. Uh -huh. What'd they do? Jesus is in the boat uh -huh. with you. You understanding that? Or is Jesus not in your boat? You know? What did they do? Wake up, Jesus! Didn't they go, you know? Wake up! We're sinking here! Help us! Don't you see we are drowning? Aren't you listening? Isn't that what we do? Huh? Are you really out there? Do you really love me? If you really did love me, you'd help me. And what does Jesus do? He's sleeping. Why does, why does Jesus sleep? You ever ask yourself that question? Why does Jesus sleep? Hmm? I ask the questions and I answer them. <laughs> <laughs> They're rhetorical questions. It's for you to think about. I answer the questions, Tony. It's for you to think about. Why is Jesus sleeping? Because he knows who he is. He's the Son of God. That's why they say, Who is this whom even the wind and the sea obey? Jesus knows who He is. He's the Son of God. 
And if he's the son of God, all the storms going on all around him can't touch him. He's going to be fine. Hmm? See, that's our problem. It's not enough that Jesus is in the boat with us. We want the storms to be calmed. You haven't learned yet in your life to dance in the storm. To say, come on rain, I'm gonna dance, okay? You want the storm to be calmed. That's your problem. And life ain't like that. One storm comes after another, isn't it, huh? You got to learn how to dance in the midst of the rain. Because Jesus is always in the boat with you. Hmm? And he knows he is the son of God. And if he is the son of God, everything is going to be fine. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I'm clinging. Hmm? Psalm 4, verse 9, read that. Uh, I can sleep secure in the midst of any storm if I know who I'm sleeping with. Hmm? I was telling you about me spending three years in Crescent City and I was part of many storms, tsunamis and everything, you know. Violent storms, shaking houses. And I'll never forget visiting this one family during one of those storms. And everybody's scared. What's going to happen? What's going to happen? Everybody was scared except the little six-year-old boy who's playing as if nothing. And I asked him, I said, well, aren't you scared? Aren't you scared of the storm? And he looks at me and he says, no. And I said, why aren't you scared? And he says, because my daddy is home. How can I be scared if my daddy is home? This is Father's Day. Huh? Is your daddy home? Is your daddy home? Ask yourself that question. Because if my daddy is home, it's all going to be fine. Which home? Inside of me. Huh? What is it that we say before we receive Holy Communion? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Hmm? Zacchaeus is on, on the tree and he's feeling all unworthy, right? Because he's a tax collector. And what does Jesus say? Zacchaeus, come down from that tree because today I want to be in your house. That's what Jesus wants to say to us, you know. I want to come to your house. Hmm? I want to make my dwelling within, within you, inside of you. Invite me. Hmm? Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Hmm? So we come here to experience that presence all the time. Hmm? That God is with me. And if God is with me, everything is going to be okay. Uh -huh. In the midst of any storms I'm going through. What does Jesus do 
to the storms? Why is it that he can sleep as the son of God? What does he do to the storm? He rebukes the wind and says to the sea, be quiet. Be still. In other words, what does he say to the storm? Shut up. Huh? That's your problem. All the voices around you, the evil spirits, the devil, the accuser, the devil in Hebrew is Hasatan, the one who accuses you. Huh? Whose voices are you listening to? Hmm? What should you say to all those voices that want to bring you down and accuse you and all the storms? Shut up. I will listen to the voice of my shepherd. For the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. What does Jesus say? My sheep hear my voice, they know me and they follow me. Shut the voices of, you know, say shut up, okay, to all those other things around you, you know, all the things that tell you you won't be okay. No, be quiet. Hmm? I will only listen to the voice of God. And then I know that I will be just fine. Hmm? because my daddy is home, especially on this Father's Day, that my daddy is home, everything is going to be just fine. 